Rub up your engines! Okay, today we have a car, happens to be a BMW, that idles funky when you start it up cold. Hence, I'm out when it's cold in the morning here. You start it up, it goes up, down, it can stall out. As you're about to see. Now, a lot of times that's a vacuum leak, as you can see under this BMW. Being old, it's a 99. It may indeed be old, but I mean, there's a lot of plastic crap. Intake manifolds, plastic, a lot of plastic crap will do that. You get a tiny crack, start sucking air, you get a vacuum leak. So we're definitely gonna check for that. But before I do anything, knowing BMWs, I'm gonna hook up a scan tool. So we'll diagnose it, see if there's anything obvious. We're going through BMW. Oh, car, so I took a picture of the VIN. Then I physically typed it in. And it's figured out, it's a 3 Series, 328i. And here we go. Since the VIN number has so much information, physically typing them in on a good tool like this hotel is going to give you the best information. The auto read systems aren't going to work on an old car. It'll also tell you squirrely things like turn the ignition off and then wait for about 10 seconds and turn it on again. Diagnosis, auto scan. And here we go. Hey, it's an old car, but hey, other than a few cracks, the leather's still in good shape. These things are pretty solid made. I'm not a modern BMW fan, but you got a standard transmission, a manual five speed. These things can last quite some time. As evidenced by the fact it's got 165,633 miles. That kid bought it three years ago for three grand. I guess he's put a couple grand in it so far, but that's not all that bad. They are fun cars to drive. Kind of slow. Been a while. It's 88%. It's getting there. And you got to say, I'm surprised. But like I say, they don't build them like they used to. This is a 99. Pretty solid built. It only has one code. Give me a modern BMW. It'll probably have 37 codes. But this only has one. So it's in the engine system. So let's see what it is. And the code is for minor leakage of fuel cap. I'll be on swag and I can see it's leaking. It's wet here. That's the original one. So time for a new gas cap. And lo and behold, it's a 99. What's the original gas cap? Made in Austria. Replacement one it even comes with a goofy tang, so you don't lose it. And anytime you put it in, just remember, turn it. Okay, now it's locked. That's it. Now you might very well think, how does a gas cap make the car idle weird when it's cold? Well, the anti-pollution system called the EVAP system for the fumes in your gas tank, they're very complex on BMWs. The system's always being monitored, and if this thing is leaky, it creates a vacuum leak, which makes the idle go bonkers, often on a cold engine first thing in the morning. Later in the day, it might not affect it all that much. Everything's warmer, the gas is warmer. So, hey, pretty simple fix for an old BMW. But as long as you got it here, hey, let's check out the data. I have to say, overall, it's running pretty smooth. Let's see what the data says. Maybe old, but everything's computerized. Even the accelerator system is electronic. That is pretty good. See, so look, the adaptation of the fuel minus 0, 0.05 and minus 0, 0.09. That's almost nothing. So it's almost running perfectly. Even though it's got 165,000 miles. Let's just say. They don't build them in Deutschland like they used to, and this is one of the used to in the 99. Still got variable camshaft timing. The BMW system works pretty good. So I gotta say, I'm impressed by this old BMW the kid paid three grand for years ago. Now he did say he loses a little bit of coolant that every few weeks he's got to add a little coolant to the reservoir. So let's check it out. Now off in the radiator seat, but he mentioned he's already replaced the radiator a while back. Changed the radiator cap. But you'll notice all this stuff is plastic on these babies. The plastic tends to get brittle and will often seep a little bit. Full presently, you see BMWs have this kind of squirrely system. They have a little float in it. Now I pressure tested the system and it didn't really show any leaks. So I'll get some UV dye, we'll put a little UV dye into the system and drive it around. The dye will come out where it happens to be leaking. And as the saying goes, the dye don't lie. Start her up, roll up the window so it's quieter. Well, BMW is one of the first to have these crazy little tiny screens on them. An old car being a 99, but hey, look, it goes pretty smoothly over that giant bump. And it still rides pretty well. It's not that wimpy of an engine as you're going to see soon. There's no doubt this is a smooth car. 
These six cylinder engines are notorious for being smooth. Pretty wide power band. I mean, check it out. Nothing is shaking, even though it's got 165,000 miles. Certainly BMW is the king of the six cylinder engines. And they still are, really. Most of their fours were pretty much underpowered, but not this thing. As you're going to see, we'll get around the corner and we'll step on the gas. Nice acceleration and very smooth acceleration. Gotta say, this thing's still going down the road pretty smooth. Yeah, the paint's a little faded and stuff on the outside, but hey, you can't have everything for three grand. Well, when you use UV leak dye, it's easier to see in the dark to check with the UV light. Out in the sun, it's kind of hard to see, so you need a shaded place to check for leaks. So I'll put on my funky sunglasses and start checking to see where that UV leak dye came out. See, when I get this UV light in the dark, it shines much better. You're not going to see it in broad daylight. And, kind of as I suspected, there's some glowing down there. Okay, see that glowing? As I said, BMWs have plastic everything, right? The rubber hoses that connect to everything, radiator hoses, the heater hoses, they have plastic parts built in that snap together. And when that snaps to the engine, it's seeping a tiny bit. Now you could go over this car and you could buy all these super expensive hose and the plastic assembly that's built onto the hose, replace them all. It doesn't overheat, it's running in the middle. And I'll tell him, unless he wants to spend a small fortune and replace all that stuff, just wash it. If one starts leaking, Big, yeah, then change it. But as it stands today, it's not dripping in the ground at all, so, eh. That's one of the main problems with BMWs. They got all this plastic crap, and as it ages, it cracks and it starts leaking. And it's all over the place. Plus, if you've ever bought BMW parts, you know they're super expensive. So, replacing all those would cost a small fortune. It's not overheating, it's running good enough. He's not gonna care. They just gotta add a little bit of coolant every so many weeks. So, there you have it. A BMW that's actually in pretty good shape compared to the new ones that'll have 20, 30, 40 codes. This only had one, and it was only the stupid gas cap, which was the original one that was leaking. So, Hey, you really can't complain. They didn't paint them all this great back in the day. You can see the clear coat's coming off. But it's still a solid, smooth running car. Yes, it's a BMW. All that plastic crap, when it breaks, it costs a fortune. He has replaced the plastic radiator already. Hey, for a fun knock around car, this thing might still go for years and years. Just realize one thing, because it's got a five-speed manual transmission. The automatic transmissions in these, if it had 165,000 miles, you'd be looking at some insane repair bills in the near future. I'd stay away from them, but if you can find one of these manuals, they can last a long time and be a lot of fun to drive. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Well, Bill Gates is getting into energy now and he says he's got a breakthrough for building nuclear power plants that use sodium to cool instead of water because it can cool passively. It doesn't have to be active. It can take more heat. They won't have meltdown problems like they do with water because water will boil off. Now, they've been working on it for 15 years and they're building a plant that they said could open its doors by 2030. It's called the Natrium plant. And like I said, it's using sodium to cool. It's the least polluting of them all. Nukes are the clean way to go. As long as you make them safe, it's the clean way to go. But understand, it's going to take a lot of time. This is Bill Gates. All the money that guy's got, and he says, well, we might have it up by 2030. You know, that's seven years from now. And that's one plan that they've been planning for a long time. So people don't understand. If we're going to use electricity, they better get their butts in gear making plants to create the electricity. Don't build a bunch of electric cars that have no electricity to charge them up with, right? It would only make sense. Of course, anything the government does doesn't make sense. So, But old Bill, he's got his head on straight here. Nuke power is the only only way to go if you want clean. All the other ones have dirty aspects to them. Building the stuff is dirty. Then what do you do when you're done with it? You know, that just sits there and rotting away. Well, the new plants last an awful long time. A lot of the new plants in the United States are over 40 years old. 40 years old. And they're still going, right? You're not going to see that with those wind farms. Those things break after 8 or 10 years. Same thing with solar panels. Batteries only last so long. Nuke makes a lot of sense. Hopefully, he'll get this thing running by 2030. And other people will finally jump on the correct bandwagon. And instead of saying wind and solar, go nuke. Nuke is the only thing that makes sense logically. Talk to any scientist, they'll tell you the same thing. It's too late to think wind and solar is going to fix anything. Nuke is the way to go. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.